Good morning, everybody. Hey, y'all. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I hate that my um light thing is in the way, but anyway, we're here. We're a little bit late, but we're here. I'm actually on my way to the doctor. And um, so I'm running a little bit behind today. But I wanted to come on for a few minutes. So there is no morning devotional today, again, because I'm in my car headed to the doctor. Hey, Mama P. Send you love and blessings. Send you love and blessings, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and pray because I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, my appointment this morning is at 8.15. I am asking you guys to pray with me. Um, I have to go back to get some blood work done. Um, and so... I am believing God that y'all ain't got myself together yet. Hold on. I'm believing God that my blood work will be perfect, that they will find nothing, that everything will be well. So I need you all praying with me for that this morning. Amen. I need your prayers for this, this follow up blood work. <clears throat> All right, let's make it do what it do. Father, we thank you so much for this day that you have made. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness, Father, that's new every single morning. Father God, we thank you just for another day. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us to not only see another day, but to be here, to be able to walk in purpose and to uh, have another chance to live the life that you've called us to live. God, I pray, Father God, that as we have this conversation this morning, Lord God, I pray that uh, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. Hallelujah. I pray, Father God, that you would speak to me, through me, and then back to me, that I may not just be a deliverer of the word, but that I will be uh, a receiver of the word myself. I pray, Father God, that your hand will be upon us today, that you would lead and guide us, give us the wisdom that we need for this day. <clears throat> and I pray, Father God, and I come into agreement with my brother and my sister, that if they have any prayer requests, if they have any need, anything that may be troubling them, anything that they are in need of on today, we come in agreement now in the name of Jesus. For your word tells us that... One can chase a 1,000, but two can chase 10,000. So, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We come into agreement in the name of Jesus that you will do what needs to be done in our lives. We are expecting the impossible. We are expecting a miracle. <clears throat> we are expecting that your blessings will be upon us on this day. In Jesus' name, cover us, protect us, and keep us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Bam, good morning. Good morning. Um, I just, when I was getting, I, I've had a, I've had a, a very, uh, um, um, what kind of morning? Um, a morning that's just been full of a lot of stuff this morning. God bless that person's car that their tire came off. Bless their car. Bless them to be able to get it fixed. Bless them to have the money to get it fixed and the right person to fix it without <clears throat> charging them an astronomical amount in Jesus' name. Um, I've been up since four, did my morning workout. Um, then I had my time of prayer and meditation. This morning's meditation was a little different. Usually I'm sitting quietly and I'm reading the word. This morning, I was kind of flipping through some different messages this morning. 
And um, <clears throat> as I was flipping through the messages all weekend, those of you that um, those of you that are, are rocking with me, rolling with me, um, I stated earlier that uh, um, I'm running a little behind today because I have a doctor's appointment. So um, <clears throat> my schedule shifted a little this morning. And to be honest, I was in there trying to get a word for myself. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, if you know, you you know, you filling everybody else up, but you you got to make sure you fill yourself up. Right. And, and I, I want to talk to you about that. I want I want to I just want to spend a few minutes before I, I get to the doctor's office and I want to talk to you about that. You cannot be so caught up in giving and giving to everybody else that you forget to take care of yourself. I, I feel like we do that a lot. We make sure that everybody else is good, but then we are lacking in areas because we're pouring out. A lot of times, uh, you, you're pouring out of an empty cup, and you got to make sure that you have enough in you to be able to give those that you are connected to. Now, now let me let me say this. Let me say this. Hear me. I didn't say those that attach themselves to you. I need to. I need to. I mean, I need to make sure that you understand the difference. Hear me. Hear me. I said you have to make sure that you get what you need, so that you, when you pour out to others, because that's what you were sent to the earth to do. You are on an assignment. You, the byproduct of being here on the earth is that you enjoy the benefits of what the earth has to offer. But you are not from here. You're from the kingdom. So your main purpose and your main assignment is to do what the father has placed you in the earth to do. When you begin to do what he's placed you in the earth to do, whatever that may be. Remember, every most of us are not going to be standing, by, you know, uh, uh, behind the pulpit. That ain't that ain't our call. Your call, your assignment, hear me, is wherever God has placed you. Your assignment, if you are a mother, that is your assignment in your family. If you are a wife, that is your assignment in your family. If you are a teacher, a doctor, uh, if you have a business, wherever, wherever God has planted you in this season, that is your assignment. And you have to make sure that you are just giving, 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 because especially for those of us that are givers, those of us that are givers, baby, we have to be very careful. Why? Because we will tend to to give and, and, and we'll give even to the point of we'll give out of our reserve. If need be, we'll go in the reserve. It's like your savings. You will go into your reserve, your savings, and you will give out of that. And you will look up one day, and you will say, I don't, I don't, I ain't got that much in my reserve. You'll be shocked like, ooh. I did that the other day. I looked at my savings account, and I said, J.C. and Marlisa, no. You done been dabbling in your savings. Uh-uh. You, you got to fix that. You got to make sure that you do not deplete your reserve. And I'm talking to you, somebody this morning. You, you, listen, I, I, I've said this before and I need to say it again. Getting your nails done and your feet done is not enough. That is not, that is not uh, accurate self-care in my opinion. That's something that you enjoy doing for yourself. Self-care is, 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 is going to getting yourself involved in an, in an exercise class where you're able to take care of your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, it, I, I'm serious. Especially women. We like, oh, I'm going to get my nails done. How about save, how about spread out the nails and the pedicure and do your, go to a spa. Go, 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 go get you a spa treatment. Because some of you may need to get a massage. You know, I've never been to a spa. I'm sitting up here thinking about that myself. <laughs> Got to fix that, Jay. I've never been to a spa where I've treated myself to that type of, uh, uh, of um, 
loving on myself. Listen, yesterday, yesterday I, 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 I took some pictures. And I was trying to think of a quote, and I couldn't think of a quote. And I said, you don't need a quote. You need to think about you need to think about who you are. And I said, you know what? It's taken me 50 years to love me. 50 years. That's a long time. Oh, that's a long time. It's taken me my whole life to love me unconditionally. It's taken me my whole life to love me, thank you, unconditionally. I'm talking about my, my good, my bad, my, my, the stuff I like about myself, the stuff I don't like about myself. It's taken me a long time to really appreciate the fact that God never made me perfect. It, we're not perfect. You're never going to be perfect. But he fearfully and wonderfully created you to be exactly who you are. This is why, listen. I went to, to Faith International yesterday and Pastor Alexis Stevens just, baby, shut the whole baby. That woman of God preached. And she was saying the Ruach, the breath of God lives on the inside of you. I don't think we sometimes understand that. I think sometimes we take that for granted, that God lives on the inside of me. And we don't tap into, we don't tap into who he is in us. I want to ask you a question. When you wake up in the morning and doing your prayer time, do you ask, do you invite the Holy Spirit into your day? Or do you just go about your day? Do you invite him in? Holy Spirit had to check me on that a, a, a couple months ago. I was reading this book about Don't Miss Out. And it's about the different functions and operations of the Holy Spirit. And the author said, the Holy Spirit is, he don't just show up. He waits to be invited. And I'm telling you, there, there are those of you that are listening to me this morning, you're having a difficult time doing what you're called to do because you're trying to do it in and of your own strength. You have not yet taken the time to invite the Holy Spirit in. Come on, somebody. You got to invite him. See, everything that God does, he waits for an invitation or he waits for us to partner with him. Hear me. Hear me. Again, he's waiting for an invitation. You know, people, people that are right, people that are mature, people that, that, that really have themselves together, uh, they don't just show up unannounced. They wait to be invited because they understand their place. They understand their place. You hear me? They understand their place. They understand that I can't just show up to somebody's house because I might be out here just knocking and knocking. I'm one of them people. I love you, but if you show up to my house unannounced, you're going to just show up unannounced because I'm not going to open the door. I will sit there and watch you on the camera. I will not even get up. As a matter of fact, I roll over on the couch or wherever I'm at. I'll just be looking at you because nobody, you you did not let me know that you were coming. <laughs> let me break that down for you. The Holy Spirit is saying to you today, in order for me to get involved in your life, in order for me to, to, to make deposits into your life, in order for me to be what I need to be in your life and do what I need to do in your life, you're going to have to invite me. I, God is so, he's such a gentleman. He, he's so patient. He, he's such a gentleman that he waits for you to invite him in so that he can do what he's been waiting to do. Come on. He, he, he said, I need you to give me an invitation. Remember, the Bible tells us that Jesus stands at the door of our heart and he does what? He knocks. So he stands at the door and he knocks. He does not bust the door down. He does not, you know, try to finagle his way in. He's not a pusher. He ain't going to try to make you. He's not a narcissist. He's not a manipulator. He's not going to pressure you. He just go. And he's going to give you the choice as to whether or not you let him in. And I'm telling you, some of y'all this morning, like myself, 
Some of y'all just jumps up and you're so ready to pour into other people because that's, that's what you're called to do. And you understand your calling. You're ready to walk in your calling. You're ready to walk in the purpose that you were created. But you're trying to do it in and of your own strength. And the Holy Spirit is saying to us today, why don't you invite me? I, listen, I got the wisdom you need. I got the direction you need. I, listen, I got everything you need. I, I can't give it to you on the level that I want to give it to you until you invite me in. Somebody say invite me. I need you to invite me. I need you to give me. Shut it loose. Come on now. Come on. Come on. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, I need you to give me access. <laughs> yeah. I, I need you to give me access. See, 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 when you give me access, sir, when you give me access, what you do is you give me permission to enjoy. You give me permission to operate in. You give me, you give me permission to occupy this space. That's why I don't like people that show up to my house on and out. Don't show up to my house on and out. That ain't of God. Are you, are you trying to do this thing in and of your own strength? Are you trying to be a mother in and of your own strength? Are you trying to be an employee in and of your own strength? Are you trying to be an employer? Are you trying to lead that business? Are you trying to lead that ministry? Are you trying to, are you trying to uh, uh, walk in that relationship without inviting him in? That's my question for you. And I'm going to tell you how you know that you are. When you, be, when you become empty, when you, when, when you have given out, given out, and given out, and you cannot find anything for you to draw on, that means that you have been giving out of yourself. Because, let me tell you something, when you have the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you, this is what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll nudge you and say, hey, 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 I need you to slow down. Hey, hey, take a minute. Like he told me this morning. Take a minute and receive this word. Sit down. Oh, I heard that. Holy Spirit say you're on the go too much. You're trying to do everything on the go. And you're not really getting. Listen, it's like it, Holy Spirit's been dealing with me so much, y'all. He, he, to, he told me yesterday, he said, slow down and chew your food. <laughs> Ooh, I'm about to, Ooh, I can feel that. He says, slow down. And chew your food. Have you ever been eating and you just eat and then you just you just eat so fast that you just consume the food and you really haven't digested it? Yeah. Uh -huh. You can't even really taste all of the seasoning in the food. You haven't let that food marinate because you, you, you're rushing eating. God says, I need you to slow down. I need you to slow down so I can do the work in you that I've already purposed to do in you, but I can't do it if you're always busy, if you're always in a rush, if, you're, if you always got something going on. I need you to sit yourself still so that I can pour into you that what you have poured out. You should. I'm not going to yell at these people today because I got to stay focused on this role. You have to understand. That you can do nothing apart from him. The Bible says, apart from him, I can do what? Nothing. Even Jesus said that. Apart from, apart from, I can't even do nothing. And you out here trying to trying to do what you're doing apart from God. Let me know how that's working for you. Make it make sense for me. Make it make sense. What's the nutshell of what you're trying to say, Jay? Slow yourself down. And make sure that you are getting what you need so that when God sends you out. Ooh, thank you for bringing that back up. Yes, sir. God says, so when when he sends you out to make deposits into the lives of those he's connected you to, you have the strength to do it. He, I, I gotta go back to that because I, I don't. I think I, I think I skipped over it and I didn't. I didn't ex, ex, expound upon it. Remember, 
in this season, God is serious about you being connected to the right people. Remember, I didn't say attached. Things that are attached to you have a hold on you. Things that are attached to you, they operate like leeches. Their function, if you saw, their function is there. Things that are attached to you come to take. <clears throat> it does not come to give. You are, some of you are connected to the parasite. And you are looking for them to add to your life. And they are coming to take everything you got. You want to know how you're how you're connected to attachments instead of connections? Because when you leave their presence, you are depleted. You are not, you are not filled. When you have connections, especially divine connections, somebody say divine connections. When you have a divine connection. When you leave that person's presence, you feel rejuvenated, refreshed, fueled, on fire. They encourage you, empower you, motivate you, help assist and aid you in some way. They bring light to you. They, 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 bring, they give you hope. God uses them uh -huh, to give you something, to, to, to deposit something in you that you did not have before. Sometimes they bring revelation. Sometimes they bring guidance, information. They give you knowledge. They, 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 they add peace to your life. If you are in an attachment, if you're in a situation that somebody's attached to you, baby, you depleted, you tired, you, you over there like, oh, God, you feel like, you know, they should have paid you for that because that felt like a whole session that you just did with them. Why? Because you don't let yourself get, get, get entangled with People that, that, that are not there to, to pour into you, but they're there to take from you. You got to be careful. This is why some of you are going into places. You're trying to do stuff, and, and it ain't working out. And it's not working out because you got you got, you done got connected to the wrong people. That's the bottom line. You've got connected to the wrong people. So what you saying, Jay? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let me park my car and I'm going to tell you. I'm glad. I'm so glad you asked. <sighs> Let me park over here. So I'm be able to pull right out and roll right on. Y'all give me one second to, to back Foxy up. <clears throat> back my girl up. Y'all understand what I'm saying this morning? You don't have, you, you don't. You cannot continue to pour out and you're not getting poured into. You can't. You got to stop. In order for you to receive, in order for you to be, in order for you to do what God has called you to do, you are going to have to. Listen to me. I didn't say you might. You're going to have to get yourself in a position and connect it to people, individuals, places that are going to add to your life. This is why I keep saying to you all, listen, you got to get yourself in a church. You got to get yourself in a church that is pouring into you to the place where you are seeing growth in your life. If you are connected to people and there is no growth in your life, you're connected to the wrong people. If you're on a job and you've gotten comfortable, you've gotten stagnant, it's time for you to look for another job. Because a lot of your relationships, they are actually they are actually pulling you down instead of pulling you back. See, when something when you pull something back, you think about a rubber band. When you pull a rubber band back, when you let it go, it 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 has a farther reach. It goes farther. That's what your relationship should be. Your relationships should be so powerful that they, 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 should, they should deposit so much into your life that they cause you to propel, to move forward in such a way that you, you, you're bad. I'm talking about to the bone, bad. 
Those of you that are out here trying to do things in your own strength, you have got to stop it because you're only going to be able to go so far for so long. You cannot start off the year like this. You've got to make up in your mind that you're going to be intentional about you. And that means intentional about getting what you need, whatever that looks like. Because you cannot pour out of an empty cup. Sometimes you got to sit and you got to receive. Sometimes you have to ask for help. Sometimes you're going to have to go to the individual and say, look, can you help me? I, 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 I need you to help me with this. Because I don't know the answers. Because I, I don't have the resources. Ooh, that's good. God said, don't be afraid to ask for help. Many of you don't have because you're not asking. The Bible tells you that. You don't have because you don't ask. Ask for help. Make sure that you are getting what you need so that you can complete your assignment. That's what it's about. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. That's why you are here. You're not here to go by, you know, Louis Vuitton and, and Tory Burch and, you know, be looking all, you know, sir, you ain't here to be flexing. And you are here because you are on an assignment. And your assignment is so critical that nobody can do it the way God has created and purposed you to do it. But I do want to let you know something. I do want to let you know something. If you don't do it, he will find somebody else to do it. God is not, he is not going to allow his kingdom to suffer because you will not get in position to do what he's called you to do. So what is that today? What is it that God has called you to do that you know that you need to step it up in, but you haven't stepped up because you, you're so busy pouring out? It is time for us to realize that apart from him, we can do nothing. Nothing. We need him. We need him to help us in every area of our lives. So today I want you to invite the Holy Spirit in. I want you to invite him in. God, I need you. I need your help. I need your wisdom. I need you. Period, point blank. I cannot be a good mother if you don't teach me, if you don't help me. Oh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother message, Holy Spirit. That's it. And 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 you you need to pray that that uh you 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 are teachable. Pray to be teachable. Right. Pray that God will 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 teach you. You don't know it all. I don't, I, you need him. We need him. Invite him in. Every day, all throughout the day. Lord, help me to make the right decision. Especially. It's, Especially when you got to make decisions concerning people. You need to be asking for his help. Ask him to help you. Because he is ready. He, he All he's doing is waiting on you. Amen. All right. I hope you got something out of that today. I'm headed into the doctor's office again. I'm doing my follow-up medical, um, follow-up blood work. I need you all praying with me that my blood work is good. It is excellent. That they, they, they find nothing, no sickness, no disease, no nothing. It, it, it is excellent. I need you to be in prayer with me today that I will have a favorable report in the next day or so. My blood work will be excellent. Amen. All right. In a nutshell, take care of you. Get what you need to get so that you can be and do what God has called you to do. Souls out here waiting on you. The kingdom is waiting on you. 
There are people that you are assigned to that's waiting on you to get in position and do what you need to do. But you're not going to be able to do that if you are not prepared. If you listen. You cannot give out of an empty cup. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you today so that you can be and do who God has called you to be. Amen. Point meet in Jesus name. Amen. All right. I'll see y'all on Wednesday. All right. I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Have an amazing, amazing day. All right. And um, remember, God loves you. And so do I. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you and your family. I pray that the favor of God, that the blessings and the peace of God will go before you, surround you, and they will follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I love you guys. See you Wednesday. Bye-bye.